Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Michelle Morris. I'm the Chief Medical Officer for the New York City Health Department and Deputy Commissioner for our Center for Health Equity and Community Wellness. The maternal health bills that are being signed today will have expansive positive impact on health and birth equity in our city. They expand awareness of vital information and services that will empower women and pregnant people to better care and advocate for their health and the well-being of their families. I would now like to invite our elected officials to speak about the bills being signed. And first, I'd like to turn the mic over to Speaker Adrian Adams. Thank you, Speaker. Ooh, there's a platform here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for joining today's important bill signing on the Council's package of maternal health legislation. These are critical issues of social justice that determine the health and safety of New Yorkers, especially, especially disproportionately compromised black women and women of color. I'd like to recognize all of my colleagues in government who are here today and the bill sponsors who were instrumental in the passage of our maternal health legislative package. Public advocate Jumani Williams, uh, in, in her absence, Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson, Brooklyn Borough President Antonio Reynoso, City Council Health Committee Chair Lynn Schulman, Hospitals Committee Chair Mercedes Narcisse, and Council Members Farrah Lewis, Jennifer Gutierrez, Crystal Hudson, Julie Menon, Althea Stevens, Carlina Rivera. Who am I missing? Oh, Jen Gutierrez. I said Jen. I did. I did. <laughs> okay. The signing of the Council's maternal health legislation into law marks a significant step in our city's efforts to begin addressing this long overdue issue. These bills expand access to maternal health services and address some very specific areas of maternal health services and issues that have perpetuated health disparities for black women and other women of color. They also inform New Yorkers about the importance of doulas and midwives who are fully trained in advocating for and supporting those who are giving birth. Even before COVID-19, black women and birthing people faced a severe crisis that is rooted in our country's history of racism and discrimination. These are the facts. In New York City, black women are eight times more likely than white women to die from a pregnancy-related cause. We are three times more likely to experience severe maternal morbidity than white women. And while 30 birthing people in our city die each year due to pregnancy-related causes, nearly 3,000 women almost die during childbirth, a majority of whom are indeed women of color. These disparities for black, Latino, and indigenous people are not just horrifying and staggering, they are shameful. The harm that is inflicted on mothers giving birth is traumatic. Time and time again, we hear stories about women not believed about the pain they're feeling or the lack of access to proper care when they need it the most. These stories are not new to us. Many of us know personally, if we have not personally experienced these stories, we've lived them. And I know some of us in this room, you among us, have heard these stories and or experienced them as well. This has been an ongoing problem in New York City and across our entire country for far too long. But the difference now is the leadership of this city's first women majority New York City Council. This council has prioritized taking action on this issue together with our partners in the public advocate and our borough presidents. We are a council made up of mothers and grandmothers like myself. Several young mothers who recently gave birth, not just like myself. <laughs> mothers to be and members who may not be interested in having their own children at all, but I've said it before. Women govern differently, and we prioritize differently as well. 
This council has demonstrated what women leadership looks like and how we focus on solutions to issues that for far too long have impacted us inequitably without government action. In addition to this groundbreaking package of legislation on maternal health, we passed the historic New York City Abortion Rights Act earlier this summer that was just signed into law last month. We will continue to work tirelessly to help our city recover as a safer, healthier, and more equitable place for all New Yorkers. So I wanna thank you again, my colleagues, all of the bill sponsors for making today's historic bill signing ceremony a reality. A special thanks to our mayor, Eric Adams, for signing our bills. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Speaker Adams, for grounding us with those words. Next, I'd like to pass the mic to Brooklyn Borough President Antonio Reynoso. Um, just want to thank everyone for being here. Um, I want to keep it as positive as possible because what we're doing here today uh, is significant and extremely meaningful. Uh, in Brooklyn, it's actually higher than eight times the rate that black women die um, compared to their white counterpart. I've dedicated my entire capital budget in Borough Hall to um, outfit public hospitals in Kings County, Woodhall Hospital and Coney Island with state-of-the-art birthing centers. And I will make Brooklyn the safest place for black women to have babies within four years. <laughs> my wife had both of our children in Woodhall Hospital. Uh, and through that, I got my education, a crash course in how they treat women and how women should be treated with the support of midwives and a caring centered around midwives. And it's something that I think we should all be emulating. We have lives that are being lost that are, that are very preventable. And we should have 20 cameras in this room right now for the work that this city council and this speaker has done today. It is the grossest inequity that exists in our society is maternal health and black women specifically, for black women specifically. There is no other inequity that exists in our entire society where someone is more affected nine times more than any other population. Nothing else. There's a very, uh, through race. And I wanna be very clear that this is a, a black issue. It is a race issue. This is not a poverty issue as well that we have to be mindful of. It doesn't matter if you're a rich black woman or a poor black woman, your rates and opportunities to die are extremely high and unnecessary. So I wanna do everything in my power again to make Brooklyn the safest place in the city, eventually the safest place in this country for us to, for women to have babies. Um, but I just wanna say again to this council for putting this front and center, considering that these inequities have existed for centuries. And it is now that we're talking about these solutions and now that we're putting forth investments and efforts to finally address what I consider the grossest inequity in our society. I can't say how grateful I am to all of the women behind me that led this way and um, Jumani Williams is also here, the public advocate who just recently had a baby. And I wanna say that um, it was our duty since we've been very young to protect our women um, in my culture specifically. And I really feel like uh, the work that we're doing right now as like the men that get it uh, is, is gonna be meaningful because this isn't a women's issue. This is a societal issue that we all have to be a part of. So thank you so much for having me here. And don't forget to spread love is the Brooklyn way. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Borough President Reynoso. Thank you especially for speaking about your personal experience with midwifery, which I think all of us need to continue to learn more about, and especially the power of midwifery. Um, I'd like to pass the mic next to public advocate Jumani Williams. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I think I'm good. Yeah. But listen, I'm gonna say first, I actually didn't plan this. so. When the mayor said that he was gonna sign these bills, my wife and I had scheduled conflicts. I gotta tell you, I'm married to an amazing black woman. She's an attorney. I have not won a case yet. Uh, so, <laughs> well, I, I probably won't. Like this is the third or fourth time that I've pleaded my case. Like I have some media stuff to do and I get that look like, okay. Um, so we're here and I'm, I'm happy to be with our miracle baby, Amani. Um, I wanna thank the mayor who will hopefully be signing these bills uh, in a short while, and of course the speaker, the chairs, and, and all, of, uh, all of my colleagues. Um, this is a, amazing. You know, one of the things that sticks out to me is the advocate uh, 
when we had the press conference, said she'd been working on this for 35 years. 35 years. And there has never been any legislation to address it until now. And it's not lost to me that it happens when it's a majority woman council and a black woman speaker. Uh, this is the importance of making sure that we have all the voices yep, heard. Yep, yep, yep. And I want to shout out the uh, women on my staff. Before I even knew how close this would hit, uh, they brought this to me about two or three years ago. I had no idea what was happening, what was going on. I had no idea how close to home it would hit. And of course, I shared uh, the story with myself uh, and India uh, have, have been going through. And I have to tell you, even before we got a doctor who started listening and treating uh, my wife like she should be treated, I still didn't see the comparison uh, when they were trying to take her uterus at every turn uh, without even understanding that she wanted to have uh, children. And I'm standing before you today. My wife is cancer-free. Uh, beautiful miracle baby is seven months. Uh, and this, uh, it's amazing. Um, but, you know, I haven't shared this part, but, you know, when, when, they were, when she was born, we were immediately told that she and my wife would have to have a blood transfusion. And when you're standing there thinking about people like um, Shaja Washington and Amber Isaac and the people, the people who are carrying their legacy and thinking about those stories in there, it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. And I know how blessed we are because of how our story turned out. I just can't imagine how many people we lost in those 35 years or more that people have been working on this issue. As the ball president said, this is a heinous disparity that is simply unacceptable. I also can't imagine what would have happened if my wife and I couldn't take off work without thinking about how we're gonna pay the bills. There are so many things that are intertwined and how black women are dying. And also, I remember my wife telling me, uh, she, we have a beautiful 14-year-old by marriage. The way she was initially treated was the same way she was treated when she was unmarried with no career and no insurance. She's married with a great career, great insurance, and still was treated the same way. It is a simple race issue. And I'm proud of the legislation that we've put forward. And I'm proud to be part of a, leg a legislature that's going to really move this to the level it needs to be, understanding this is the step that probably should have happened 35 years ago. Uh, but it's not going to stop here. Peace and blessing, love and light to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you so much to the public advocate and to your daughter for being here and to, again, underlining how much racism shapes these outcomes and is completely preventable. Next, I'd like to pass the mic to Councilmember Farrah Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. I sure did need this, right? Um, <laughs> um, first, I just, because I see you here, I want to thank uh, Speaker Adrian Adams, because, because before the overturning of Roe versus Wade, she was already thinking about how do we combat issues with maternal health in New York City. So if we could give her a quick round of applause for her leadership. And I also just want to thank Mayor Adams as well for already thinking about the issue that we're combating in the city, and that's racial disparities that black women are going through. I know in my district, in Council District 45, we have the highest rate of maternal mortality and morbidity in East Flatbush amongst Caribbean women. So this issue is very, very much an issue that I'm passionate about. I used to be in healthcare before I made it into politics, and I know how much we need advocates on the ground, as well as city hall that will address these issues. So I just want to thank my colleagues who co-sponsors build with bills with me, uh, 482 and 409, um, making sure that we're also talking about the conditions that cause maternal health issues like polycystic ovary syndrome. We have a lot of women in New York City who have these conditions, and when they go and meet with their doctors, there's no one that could identify what the real issues are. So I just want to uh, thank the council for pushing this forward. Thank you, public advocate, for always putting um, women first. And thank you, borough president, for all that you're doing right now with birthing centers in Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman Farrah Lewis. Um, in particular, for highlighting Caribbean women, women of Caribbean descent, I think it's really important that we remember how important it is to tailor our work and our messages to communities, specifically who might be having different experiences. I want to welcome up Councilmember Jennifer Gutierrez next. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank Speaker Adams for her unwavering leadership and commitment. Um, 
not just as a speaker, but as a member. She's truly tied in the notion that when you elect women, you get changes for women that matter at the policy level. So I want to commend her for her work, for her space and allowing us to pursue this. I, of course, want to thank Borough President Antonio Reynoso, um, who in many ways kind of helped me through my pregnancy. I also delivered at Woodhall, um, and I didn't think about how impactful it was that I was able to work with a midwife and that I was privileged uh, to be a relative of a doula who was there for me when I delivered my child. Um, the experience that our public advocate shared um, is still truly resonates with me. And I can go on and on about how beneficial these bills are at not just reminding New Yorkers how valuable black women are, how valuable Latina women are, how valuable indigenous women are, but I want to drive home that the practice of midwives and doulas, it's ancestral, it's indigenous. Long before we were talking about how important it is, our communities were doing it already. And so this package of bills validates that very indigenous practice that all of our ancestors have already done um, and really tie money to it, uh, tie timelines to it. I'm excited to see what the report reveals at the end of next year because what we, what we know um, and what I can anticipate is that the priority areas are going to do a lot better and that we need to invest a lot more energy and funding into ensuring that every pregnant person has the same access to healthcare in this way. So thank you once again to all my colleagues for being my partners and thank you for my mentors. Um, and of course our speaker for, for allowing us this space to get these bills finally passed. Thank you so much, Councilmember Gutierrez, and thank you again for uh, underlining in indigenous practices as a part of this work. Next up, I'd like to welcome Councilmember Crystal Hudson. Good afternoon and thank you. I just want to reiterate what everyone um, has said and to commend the, the men in the room um, who are standing with us as uh, Borough President Reynoso said, the men who get it. But the, the sad truth is that there aren't enough who do. And it's always women who are fighting for women and black women who are fighting for black women and women of color who are fighting for ourselves. And we need more people to understand um, that at all of these intersections, it takes all of us to advocate um, for each and every one of us, particularly those of us who are most disproportionately impacted by something like uh, maternal mortality. Um, I launched a black agenda for New York City last year when I was running for city council, and it got no shine, no love, because it's talking about black people. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of the fact that this bill, that's the bill that uh, I uh, sponsored that's in this package is the first bill that I've passed and is a direct result of the black agenda for New York City. And I know that when black people thrive, all people thrive. Amen. And I want to keep talking about black people. And, and like we've heard here today, black women and black birthing people are the people who are literally dying regardless of uh, health healthcare status, regardless of income status, it is literally an issue of racism. Um, and so if we don't continue to talk about black people, uplift black people and advocate specifically for black people, then none of us is going to be okay. So um, thank you. It's a, it's a true honor to be here. And thank you to everyone um, for championing this package of bills, including the speaker, uh, the mayor, the public advocate, the borough president. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Crystal Hudson. Um, next up, I'd like to welcome Councilmember Julie Menon. Thank you so much. I first of all want to thank our speaker for her incredible dedication and commitment to putting forth this legislative package and assisting all of us in getting these bills through. Um, and I also want to thank Dr. Vasan, who's going to be tasked with uh, basically implementing a lot of these incredibly important measures. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge our health committee chair, Lynn Shulman. So I'm incredibly proud today to stand along with my colleagues, and I want to commend them on their incredible bills. As the mayor signed several important bills today, including um, my legislation, Intro 490. This bill would direct the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to provide sexual and reproductive health services and conduct research on such health disparities within the city. We can't sit idly by as our daughters all across the nation literally have less rights than we do and that we did. By codifying abortion and family planning services, as well as counseling, testing for HIV, sexually transmitted infections, 
particularly for individuals without health insurance, uh, we can ensure New York City is a beacon for all women across the nation. It's critical that our city prepares for the next wave of individuals with safe and accessible sexual and reproductive services. And this bill that I'm discussing, 490, requires the Department of Health to do just that. I'm grateful to stand alongside the mayor at today's bill signing as we stand up and protect the rights of women when the Supreme Court did not. New York is going to continue to remain a leader for abortion access and health access for women. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Menon. And next up, we have Councilmember Althea Stevens. So when you speak last, you, you, they already said a president, everyone was already thanked and all those things, so I can just jump right into it. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I just wanted to say that I think is really important is that this is one of my first bills that I'm passing. And two years ago when I first started to run, um, my little sister's best friend passed away um, a few hours after giving birth. So it's not lost on me that today I'm standing here that's really going to save lives. Um, a, young, a young son is growing up without his mom because we did not have this information and access to maternal health care. So today, I'm just honored to be here and making sure that the lives that have been lost are being honored as we sign these bills into law. And that's what I, I really want us to remember and really think about. Because today, I'm standing here for Tiffany, who passed away because we did not put this in place before. But now, with the majority of women, as you guys know, we don't just put in legislation, we also think about how do we do this holistically, which is why this is a package of bills and not just one bill. And so those things are so important. And so thank you, Mayor, Speaker Adams, public advocate and the borough presidents for starting this and now we're here to finish it off. So thank you guys all today, appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. And I just, I believe all the important notes were said. I want to thank the speaker and the amazing team of lawmakers who uh, played such a, an important role. We all talked about it over and over again about how important it is to deal with the disparities around maternal health and some of the challenges. And uh, Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson, uh, Brooklyn uh, Borough President Antonio Reynoso, Thank you for what you're doing in Brooklyn uh, around investing in just about all of your capital dollars around this topic and making your, your legacy and public advocate Shimani Williams. The three of us are part of the Men Who Gets It caucus. caucus. We understand we need to be here and be supportive. <laughs> uh, Councilwoman Farrah Lewis, Lewis uh, Councilmember Crystal Hudson, Councilmember Julie uh, Menon, Councilwoman uh, Jennifer, can, can, I always get your name, butcher your Gutierrez. name. Gutierrez. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Athea Stevens, Lynn Showman, Mercedes Narcisse, a former nurse, this entire team. And so it's really not much more I can say, but just allow my pen to sign the bills. Intro 86-A, 409-A, 472-A, 478-A, 478-A, 490-A, 500-A. Great work uh, coming together to make this happen, and thank you for doing this.
Thank you. 